and welcome back to Safety Third Forge. It's been a minute since I uh, did a video, but I wanted to come back and do this video. Today, I'm going to be making chain mail and starting a coif out of chain mail. Um, I just want to say thanks for watching and another big thing that's happened since I've been my last video is I now have a website. Um, I'll put a link in the description and up on screen here but you can go to www.safetythirdforge.com you can see pictures, you can order um, I'm hoping to have some shirts and coffee mugs in, for sale on there soon so, so if you could go check it out I'd appreciate that and let's get into the video <clears throat> okay, so this is the jig I made here for making the chain mail. If you can see right there, there's a hole that the wire will feed through. I'll kick the drill on and it'll wind the wire around here. Then I can cut it up, take this out, and get the, wire, the springs that are made. Uh, that's Steve. Our cat, Steve French, Trailer Park Boys throwback. Um, make the basically springs that are needed to then cut the rings for the chain mail out of. And then here's my roll of wire. Right now, I could only find 14 gauge galvanized steel or aluminum. Uh, galvanizing freaks me out, kind of, and I didn't want to make it out of that. So for now, my first project, I'm going to make it out of this. 14 gauge aluminum, it's actually cattle fence wire. I'm going to use this for the first time and if this goes well and I really like it, then I will order off of, online I could find plain steel wire, but in the town where I live it's only galvanized or aluminum. So, let's try to make some springs. Alright, so Let's try to make some springs. Loaded this through here. Gonna clamp that down. this off Come back once I have some more made up and we can start putting some mail together. Alright, so here's some of the springs we made. I'm not sure how well these ones that didn't get like wound super tight here will work, but we're gonna give it a try. Basically now all I gotta do is cut every individual ring out of these springs. So I'd come around just where the uh, last spring ended. And give it a clip. And there's one ring. Um, I used a 3 8 rod. They said it's a little easier when you're first learning to uh, start with a bigger um, inner diameter 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be cutting for a while. So here's all these rings cut up. Um, cut. It's about this size, maybe a little bit bigger than this. Was all of these. Um, so you end up with this, and if you look, there's a little bit of rag in there from the cut. I think it's because it's aluminum and it's a little soft. But what I can do is just take the needle nose pliers and break off that little rag piece and then all I'm going to do is take them and bring them together like this to make a ring. So I'm going to take a break. This was pretty rough on the hands. I'm going to take a break and actually start assembling a little bit of these and we'll film that and then I'll come back and do some more. Okay so what I got here is I ran a line across these screw screws on top of the boards here that for my spinning jig, turning jig, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I've closed nine rings onto this wire because what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make a nine by nine by nine triangle. Um, this is going to be for the top of the dome part of a coif. Coif? I don't know. I'm sure. So what we're going to want to start off doing is take two closed rings we're going to take an opened ring, thread it through here, and close that up. So we have the first, oop, that didn't close quite right. So that closed. Now I'm going to slide another ring over, take another open ring, and slide it through the second ring from the end and the ring I just moved over. close it like so. Then I'm going to bring another one over like this, connect the last one I just put on and this one and so on down the line until I get these nine done. Okay, so now that I got this row done, these two, my initial row and the next row down, I'm going to go back the other direction, this way, hooking one between here, 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 and down. Come through here, hook there, grab that, and close it. Nah. 
And I'll finish out this row and I'll just do some time lapse here and there of finishing out this section. Alright, so there's one section completed. I have to make five more of these. We'll then sti get stitched together to make like the round part that would go over like the top of your head. Um, so I'm gonna shut off this for a while. This might end up being kind of like a two-parter video. This might end up being just how to make chainmail links and then the next video will be assembling the coif. Um, I'm not for sure. But this is so awesome. Look at this. This is awesome. So, um, I will check back in a little bit. There's all five sections of the crown piece done. Um, it took about two hours to get all that done, I think. Uh, I started getting a better process on how to uh, process the springs and such. Okay, so here we are. It's the uh, next day, and uh, I have all my sections made. What I'm going to do now, show now, is linking these sections together um, the best way I've found to do it for me, and then um, go from there. Okay, so what we have to do now to link these together is we're going to go in the center portion here we're gonna take and thread a ring through this side then through this side and then up around the wire and then close that off Now, if you look, we'll, you'll see that this is the ring right here I added, and it's completing the pattern of this top row of rings. So I linked it to through the second row up and then hooked it to the wire here to complete this first row. Now I just need to go through down each row from there, hook through the two in the row and then up to the ring that I first put in. This is really hard to see. Um, I'll try to make it as clear as possible. Uh, the way it, I watched on videos is people did it on the table and I could not figure out the pattern right. So I found hanging it this way was the best bet. So. should be right. That was much easier to thread through. There we go. So then that continues on with our pattern. So these are going this way, these are going this way, and I'll just keep... So there's that all connected. Uh, these center rings can be a pain in the butt. You just have to be careful. Put it in there, look at it, and 
try to see if that's the right way or not. Um, that's the only way I've found to do it. I'm sure once you get more, I get more practice at it, it'll be much easier. But now that we have these two sections stitched together earlier, as I was practicing trying to figure it out, I stitched together three sections here. Um, so I'm going to take and merge these two together. And then we'll come back when I finish the circle. And that, I'm nervous about that, but we'll work through it. We'll figure it out. And so we're going to connect right there for now. Okay, so we got everything stitched together, and we got to stitch together this last seam here. And I don't know how well it's going to come out on video. It's kind of tricky to get it, but you just follow the same pattern of looping the next ring down and continuing the pattern with the line above it. So there we go it's all closed up now this is going to be the end of this video the next video will be expanding it out and making more of a coif thanks for watching <laughs>